guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Royals, sponsored by The Game Crafter. In the game Royals, you're playing two to four players, less than 30 minutes, and for ages 12 and up, and you're attempting to gather royal favor. You'll be placing characters down to either facilitate you gaining points or utilizing them as schemes to stop other players or benefit yourself. You'll get a certain amount of cards in your hand, and you'll be playing those cards down, attempting to gain victory points by gathering followers underneath them and scoring as many points as you can with the hand limit that you have, because once your hand runs out, you're basically done with the game. The game is quick, simple to learn, easy to play with quite a bit of strategy. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you how to play the game and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we have the game Royals and it's all set up for two players. To begin the game, you'll simply draw out five cards from this shuffle deck to each player. In the game, it comes with a deck of cards, a box for all the components, and of course the rules to explain the nature of the game, which is fairly simple. Once you've gone ahead and shuffled it up and dumped everybody out five cards, you're then going to simply start by having one player begin from their hand, placing one out as either a scheme or as a consort. If you play a card as a consort, you're going to play it face up, face forward in front of you. That will allow you to score the victory points on the card, as well as any windfall of bonus conditions that may apply. However, if you do not want to play it as a consort, you can go ahead and simply turn it to the side and play it for its scheme ability down here below. Additionally, whenever you play a card as a consort, you're going to play it just like this, and there's a number at the bottom. That number is going to be the needed followers or supporters that will be placed under the card. You'll be using followers slash supporters from your hand by taking them and placing them underneath the card like so in order to demonstrate that this card has the number of followers associated with it. This one here is the Duke and it is worth 7 points at the end of the game and you'll get plus 4 points if all of your consorts are imperialists. There are two types of different cards in the game. There are the imperialists and the royalists which tell you in the rules here. Imperialists are blue and royalists are red. So after you went ahead and selected one of the cards as a scheme or consort, you're going to pass and the next player will do the same and it will go back and forth up until the point in which no player has any cards left in hand. You're never going to draw cards unless specifically stated to do so by the cards uh, that you play as schemes or as consorts. But otherwise, when your hand is empty, you're done for the rest of the game and you'll simply have play pass to your opponent or opponents up until the point where they no longer can play either. After that follows the scoring round, where you're going to score points based on the windfall and bonus victory points on the top of the card, and all of the rest of the consorts will score as well. However, schemes will never score, and they'll be set aside. You're basically just using them for their active abilities. So if I wanted to begin the game, I could simply play something like, oh, I don't know, we'll go ahead and play this one here. This is the queen. She's worth seven points, and it says you gain plus four if all of your consorts are royalists. Then I'm going to take three cards, and I'll place them underneath the queen to illustrate that she has three supporters which allows you to play this card the reason why she requires three supporters is because she is a very powerful card with a lot of points followed up by this player over here they're going to look at their hand as well they'll play a card like maybe this minister here just like this that's worth three points then we'll get plus one point for each of your consorts that is a royalist as well and this specific card only requires one follower then back to this player's turn here. Now this player can go ahead and play this card simply outright. It has zero supporters, so it can be played by itself. And it's worth zero points, and you suffer minus three points if this card is a supporter or a consort. So probably not something you want to play as a consort. So you can go ahead and turn it to the side and use it as a scheme, which is to remove any in-play in card which would allow you to remove any in-play card. So this card here would actually get removed just from playing this assassin. Very, very powerful indeed. This player is now done. They played their scheme, and now this player is going to go. So this player might play something like this, such as the Baron, which is going to give them three points, and if you gain plus, you gain plus three if you have the most number of cards in play. Applying this card underneath it, because it is a uh, requires one supporter. And then finally, he is now his turn again because this player is now done. They have no more cards left to play. So they'll play this card here, which is a wizard, to copy the windfall of any one card in play, and it's worth one point. However, they could have used this as a scheme if they wanted to. All players draw a card, and you draw an additional card. But we'll just go ahead and play it like this for the lack of, for ease of play and quickness of explanation. So this card's played down, and it can now copy any windfall ability. These areas here are all windfalls. So I'll go ahead and copy... 
this one here, which gives you plus four points if all of your consorts are royalists. So, in fact, both consorts are royalists in this, in this faction, and so he will actually get this special ability. Now, that's it. They've both played all of their cards, so they're then going to go ahead and score. Seven points, plus four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven points total for this player here. This is worth nothing. And this player here is going to get three points, plus three more if you have the most cards in play, which in fact you don't, there's two and two. And then this player is going to get one point plus four because both of his consorts are royalists. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight compared to 11 is going to be this player as the winner. So this player here is going to win the game. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but there's a number of different combinations that could have happened throughout this gameplay. Differences as to how you wanted to play the cards, how you'd want to use the schemes. Nevertheless, that's the basic idea for the game. Royalist, a very simple to play card game with quite a bit of interesting strategy as to what you would like to do with it. Royalist is a simple game. You're only going to need five cards to play from this little deck here, and you're simply going to choose between one of two options, playing it as a consort or playing it as a scheme. Schemes are basically action cards, which will allow you to do certain things Things like draw additional cards, stop players' windfalls, destroy certain characters, and mess with the other players, whereas concerts are going to score you bonus points and give you the potential windfall abilities to give you even more points provided you follow the rules required on those cards. You're going to have people like the banker here, which will give you no points as it stands, but the windfall will give you one point for every consort that you have fairly useful. You can also use them as a scheme, which will allow you to switch the faction to any, in card, uh, any card in play. It will also let you draw a card as well. That's actually really good. And it has no supporters required, which makes them really, really powerful. A commoner here, worth zero, but when you add it as a supporter, it will give you plus one point. And you could also take an in-play supporter and add it to your hand and swap this card in its place if you would like by playing it as a scheme. And it goes on from there with a knight, a lord, a handmaiden, a general, a bishop, the princess, the queen, the king, so on and so forth. Fairly straightforward, right? And of course, when you're out of cards, you're out of cards, and players are just going to go ahead and play it through. The game does take less than 30 minutes, and it's quite simple as to how it's played. After you get it the first time, you'll start realizing that there's more and more strategy that can be added as to how you want to play the game. Additionally, you could progress the game into a lengthier game, because there are a lot of cards that let you draw cards, let other players draw cards, and give you benefits and negatives all at the same time. So there's quite a bit of a switch around, as you would want to call it. Overall, Royals is a ton of fun. The artwork is very, very cute. The cards are really well made. Uh, it's got all the cute little dogs and cat characters on them, and it's one of those games that can easily be played as a filler game, or a game you can simply play throughout the entire night because of how easy it is to play, yet the remarkable amount of strategy that is added to the game. I remember our first game, and we were just going, doop, 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 oh, that's it, game over? Uh, okay, that's cool. And then we played our second game, and we're like, oh, look what I could have done, or how could I have done it better? And I start to see the different types of strategies involved with using the schemes or certain characters with more power or less power, because obviously playing a queen or a king is very, very powerful and will give you a lot of points. However, at the cost of losing cards in hand and not allowing you to continue playing the game. 11 points in the game is actually a rather good amount, but you can get more than that if you work with your hand the best you possibly can. And it's also quite... <laughs> possible for you to score very little points, provided other players want to mess with you enough, or you just don't play the right card combinations. Windfall requires you to play specific combinations to gain specific turns of points, and if you're not sure, playing them in the correct order at the correct time, and facilitating your hand to the best of its ability, you'll mess up. There's many games where I had played this game and realized I should have done this better. Now that I see my hand, this is probably the best possible combination based on the cards he had, and based on what I had, but regardless, you're never going to know fully what your opponents have. There's quite a bit of luck as to what cards you'll get to begin the game with, and a bit of strategy as to what cards you should pull and how you should be using those cards to facilitate the most points. There's obviously a best strategy when you have those five cards in hand, but you don't know what your opponents are going to do, how they're going to play, or how they're going to uh, uh, distract your win condition or mess with you in some way, shape, or form. Overall, Royals is a solid little game. I really, really enjoyed this one, and if you like small card games that play quick that are nice filler games, this is one I would strongly recommend, another very strong title from the Game Crafter. I had a lot of fun with this one. It will sit on my shelf for quite some time because there are times I already know when I'm going to want to play this game with new gamers as well as those more advanced gamers that just want a little break from those heavy Euros.